So enterprise executives like at General Electric and Comcast and other places keep telling me they're going iPad. And what does that mean? Well, that means you have to change your infrastructure, you know, your SharePoint, your files, all have to be um, modified a bit to work properly on a tablet PC. And IonGrid has a solution for uh, getting all those files over here really easily, and we're going to see it right now. Who are you? I'm Nick Triantos. I'm founder and CEO at Ion Grid, and I uh, spent most of my career, my early career, building system software at places like Apple Computer, NVIDIA, uh, and then spent several years building software most recently for the intelligence and defense communities in the US government. Wow. Um, yeah, very, very large touchscreen driven computing systems, things like eight foot diagonal iPads that they use for all kinds of interesting projects, I'll say, that uh, have <laughs> to do with the Middle East and places like that. So, yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, executives keep telling me that they're buying tens of thousands of iPads for their mm -hmm. companies, you know, Procter & Gamble, General Electric, Comcast, and mm -hmm. uh, on and on. What are you seeing and, and what is Ingrid doing sure. for these enterprise kinds of customers? Yeah, we're seeing that. We're also, I mean, obviously, I know it's a little overplayed by now, the whole bring your own uh, device into the workplace, but that's happening a lot, too. And actually, um, between the two of them, a lot of companies, especially banks and pharmaceuticals and governments and people like that who are normally very risk averse, are telling us that they're, they're really trying to rethink how they deal with information, how they deal with security, and what they allow their employees to do. It used to be that you could secure everything within the four walls of your building, and that was sort of good enough, and everything outside was evil. And now it's really the case that these kinds of devices force you to allow your information to be out there in the wild. So people are trying to rethink, what can I do with minimal effort on the server side or you know, sort of on the infrastructure side to enable that to happen without having to go whole hog toward you know, moving all of my data, for example, into totally new systems where I have to figure everything out from scratch again. Yeah, what, what is your product doing? What, sure. What's it called again? Sure, so Ion Grid builds a piece of software called Nexus. And what Nexus does is it lets mobile employees get to all their corporate information, things like files in file shares and SharePoint sites, all the stuff that sits in your home drive, you know, your U drive or your Z drive, whatever it might be, uh, and all your intranet. Uh, and we allow you to get to that through a secure application on the device. Um, the easiest way to think of it is if you're familiar with what a BlackBerry does with the BlackBerry Enterprise server, we do something similar. So we provide a server to the company that goes on-prem inside of their data center or potentially in a service like a Rackspace uh, if they have storage that lives in Rackspace. Yeah. Rackspace and then, Cloud, it, it works on cloud, it's a virtual machine really. Right? It's a VM, correct. So it can work on top of a system like a Rackspace Cloud or it can work on top of SharePoint sitting on PCs in your own data center behind your, uh, you know, behind your firewall. So Rackspace hosts SharePoint for lots of people and I correct. have to check if we can offer this as a uh, service for those hosted SharePoints. But we'll, we'll Obviously talk happy, about that. happy to talk about that too. Yeah. So um, yeah, but for the companies what they get out of it is Today what they have is situations where employees, either through work or because they're personal devices, they're just trying to get their work done. They end up taking a lot of corporate information and putting it into places like Dropbox and iCloud and Google Docs and so forth, uh, just so that they can be productive, not because they're trying to leak information or do anything malicious in most cases. Yeah. Um, and the problem is that for the end user, first of all, the experience of actually moving your data there is a pain in the behind. It means that every time the marketing department updates my sales deck, I have to know to go and take a copy of it, put it up into, for example, Dropbox so that it can get copied up to the cloud. And secondly, my presentations look awful. Um, one of the big problems that exists on iPads today and Android for that matter is that content like PowerPoint documents and Excel files and Word docs, they look terrible uh, when you view them on the device. So what we do is we provide a way for people to simply get direct access to all the SharePoint sites and their file shares and so forth, but we also make sure that for them, there's something in it too, and for them, the information looks perfect. So if I'm a salesperson trying to present, for example, drug, uh, a drug roadmap to a hospital or someone like that, I can feel confident that the presentations are going to look exactly the way they did when they were authored on the PC. So uh, on the server side, you guys are taking that PowerPoint and translating it into a format that can be spit over the wire to the iPad. Yeah, that's exactly right. We right. make it streamable down to the device. Part of the big advantage of making it streamable um, there's an advantage for the end user and there's something for the IT department. So for the end user, it means if I want to open an 80 or 100 megabyte presentation, 
I can open it in two seconds instead of having to wait while it says loading, 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 you know, the, the yeah. progress bars of death. And, um, and then for the IT department, it means that we can give much better security because the entire document never has to be resident on a device like an iPad or a phone, for example. Now, what happens if that salesperson is going into a room that mm -hmm. has no Wi-Fi <coughs> connectivity or no 3G sure. or 4G? Like, I, sure. I have an uh, iPad with a LTE on mm -hmm. it, but hey, sometimes your place is that, that ain't working. <laughs> sure, well, uh, we, with pharmaceutical sales reps, when they go into a hospital, you normally have to shut off all those radios because they can interfere with all the monitoring equipment. Um, so in that case, if the company allows you to do so, the company can say that you're allowed to take content with you offline. And the company might say, you can only have it for up to 48 hours at a time, and any copies of it on your device have to remain encrypted. And for example, you can't open it in external applications, so they can guarantee that it stays you know, nice and safe and sound inside of an encrypted container that they control. But that way your sales rep can go into a sales meeting, or I can take my information on a flight, or one of our customers is a large metropolitan transit system, they allow their repair people to go down into the subway tunnels with an iPad uh, with all the maintenance manuals for all their systems. And if they lose it later in a Dunkin' Donuts, for example, there's no schematics for all the systems that they have in place sitting on the device. Can you uh, show me a PowerPoint deck and, and tell me why it, it keeps the resolution it does? Yeah, of course. Sure. So, um, so let's see. If I had, for example, this is a sales presentation for a company on the East Coast that services nonprofits. And it's about a 100 megabyte presentation. You'll see it came up within about two or three seconds. Now, part of what we do, and I can go through this page at a time, and everything works great. If I need to jump way ahead, I can swipe up. And for example, if I want to go way out here to page whatever this might be, 25 or something, um, I can tap there, and it'll come up right away. What we do is on the server side, in order to make the information be streamable, we actually break the document apart server side, and we do some of the rendering up there as well. And the advantage of that is that if you have strange fonts, like for example, you mentioned GE at the beginning, GE has a proprietary font that they use that's sort of for their logo. You just install that font on that PC that's running our server, uh, and then all of the iPads will inherit that correct font automatically because of the way oh, that we nice. do the rendering. Yeah, so we've, we've really tried to put a lot, a lot of work into making sure that for big enterprises, for people who really care about their brand, who care about security, and who care about you know, not having $6,000 cellular bills, um, you know, that the system will work well for them. Yeah. I, when I worked at Microsoft and, and at NEC, finding my uh, PowerPoints was a pain in the butt because, yeah. you know, you're in, yeah. a, in a directory somewhere with a bunch of <laughs> slides and you're like, oh, what did I name that thing? And yeah, so yeah. is there a search here? Is there a way to sure. uh, find things that you're looking for? Yes, yeah, so we've done a couple of things. So first of all, you'll see in the user interface that it's very visual. So um, instead of just seeing file names and file modification times and who the author was, you can actually see a thumbnail of the document itself. So if the document changes, if Kurt goes and updates my slides and puts a purple logo on slide one, I'll see that and I'll know that that's the version with the purple logo that I probably don't want to show today. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is we have built search into the product as well. So a user can simply tap on search and I can type in something like, say, China. And when we perform that search, what happens is we take that string, we send that over to the server, the server performs the search, gives me back the result set, and I can then open up any of those documents that were related to China. And then for anything like a search or a folder that I'm in or maybe tags that I've applied to some of the documents, I can bookmark all of those so that I have quick access to them from the left side of the application. So uh, does this work for all the data types that mm -hmm. an enterprise would use? I mean, uh, enterprises do weird stuff. Yeah, we have videos. And correct. We don't. Yeah. Um, we support most of what we think most people need. So all of Office from 97 forward, so Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, including the new versions, uh, PDF documents, video files, audio files, and images and text files. So it's most of what you need. But for example, if you work for Boeing and you want to get the schematic diagrams for a wing that were all done in AutoCAD, or if you're an accountant and you need your information out of QuickBooks, those are things which we don't solve today. Um, and we may, in the future, just if we get enough people, if, if Boeing called me up and said, I've got a large bag of money and you know, I'd really like to get to my AutoCAD content, I'm, I'm a, an entrepreneur, I'm happy to take their money and figure out how to make it work. So. Yeah. Uh, Tell me a little bit of how you price this out for an sure. enterprise. So we sell it on a subscription basis. We basically price, our base price is $15 per user per month. And we priced it that way because that matches very closely with a lot of the cloud storage products and also with services like GoToMeeting and so forth. Um, and it means that you can scale up very, very easily. And then obviously if you get to any kind of real volume, uh, you know, when a large bank or a large pharmaceutical company gets to a real volume, they can call me up and say, you know, we're much bigger than you and if you really want any of our money, 
you're going to give us a better price, and I'm happy to do so. Okay. And uh, tell me about the team. Uh, why are you guys uniquely qualified to do this? Sure. Well, so we do have an interesting blend of skills. I mean, we came from, several of us came out of NVIDIA, so we really do understand computer graphics as, be as well as anyone else in the world, I think, uh, and systems as well. And a lot of what we're trying to do here is dealing with systems, with moving information around. That's a systems type problem. But on top of that, several of us, myself included, came out of a company most recently that I was mentioning uh, that used to sell software into the intelligence and defense communities. And we learned a tremendous amount there about what real security is and what those kinds of people expect from security. People like the CIA and the NSA and the White House and those kinds of organizations, those were our previous customers. And we took a lot of the ideas that we had from those systems we were building. These were very, very large touch-driven computing systems like you see on CNN, that was also yeah. one of our customers. Uh, and then we brought that down to a device like the iPad. We brought a lot of the, the best thinking that we had there, but different kinds of problems that we're solving here, so. Yeah, uh, every time I show an Apple product on my show, I, uh, everybody else who doesn't have an Apple product complains. Yeah. Goes, hey, what about Android? What about Windows sure, Phone? Sure. What about, you know, whatever device is coming, a Amazon Kindle Fire yep. 2.0? What are you guys thinking about sure. there, and what are you seeing in the enterprise space? What's the demand? Well, we started actually on the Android tablets because we were ex-NVIDians, and NVIDIA was nice enough to give us an early prototype of Integra-based tablet. Um, the truth is, right now, there's really just not a lot of pull in the enterprise, and I've actually blogged about this a little bit. There's The data that we've seen shows it's like 97 plus percent of the traffic in the enterprise on the tablet side is iOS. That said, on the phone side, it's really a different story. It's yeah. much closer to 50-50. And, um, and we are right now uh, evaluating what exactly we should be doing with respect to phones. And one of the things certainly that factors in there is being multi-platform and running across Android, potentially Windows Phone, uh, Blackberry, whatever other, I mean, if, if HP comes back out with a new Palm, great, we'll go and support that too. We're, we're really building everything now to be very HTML5 friendly. When we started the company in 2010, HTML5 implementations on Android and iOS were pretty awful. So it was... Yeah. You, you sort of had to bet on building uh, building native if you wanted to get anything to look right. Hey, Facebook was forced just to come out with a native app too. Yeah, that's so. exactly right. I mean, no matter how good, uh, you know, Joe Hewitt and all those guys are, um, you sort of had to go native in the early days. Now I actually think things are quite different. And actually it's one of the things that a lot of our customers are saying they like is that if you are, let's say, uh, a huge bank, a JP Morgan, for example, they build a lot of internal applications that they need to deliver to their employees and the, they have the same problem. Do I go for Android and Windows and Palm and all this other stuff, or do I just standardize an iOS? Now instead you can just standardize an HTML. And because our system allows them to get to intranet content and still keep all the security around everything, it means now that you can build proprietary in-house apps and deploy those as well through our system. Very cool. Yeah, thanks. Very interesting. Um, of course, this whole world can change in the next three months. Yep. Windows 8 is coming out, yep. and new Amazon Kindle Fires are coming yep. out next week and stuff like that. Um, anything else that we need to know about what you can do with this? Well, I mean, I think going forward, the thing is what we're doing today is providing access. That's yep. step one toward building really awesome products going forward. I think the if you look at, for example, what Microsoft has done with Windows 8, I, I watched their launch really carefully. and they've shown a lot of really compelling new functionality. I think they're really trying to take seriously that Windows needs to be refreshed at the same time Office needs to be refreshed, at the same time they have to really reinvigorate their whole cloud experience and so forth. But um, you know whether or not they'll be able to thread the needle all the way through is, is I think, to be seen. Because it's, you've got to get a lot of things to run right. A lot of what I saw in those demos looks like it runs on x86-based Windows running on tablets. Those are going to be $1,000 tablets probably, unless people are willing to come down to 500 bucks. And Windows RT, the stuff that runs on the ARM-based tablets, the less expensive ones, it's not fully clear to me yet that that'll support everything. But that said, yeah. you know, I like fluidity. It means that companies like mine can be disruptive. We really can introduce very, very new ways of thinking about problems. Um, and what's great is that the IT departments of some of the, we have ridiculously huge, one of my uh, customers has 300,000 employees. And they have, I think it's 38,000 people just in their IT department. And the fact that they're listening to my little company of 12 people about how they should think about mobile strategy is pretty fantastic. Um, we wouldn't be able to do that if things weren't really, really in motion. Very cool. Yeah, Where do we learn more about it? Uh, iongrid.com, so it's I-O-N-G-R-I-D.com. And uh, we're happy to give out free, we have actually a demo version of the server software and the client's free in the app store as well, so go ahead and give it a try. Very cool, thanks Very good. for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, great to meet you. Thank you.